One of the most popular stocks among long-term dividend investors is AbbVie, stock ticker ABBV. And there's a few different reasons behind this. If we start over here, we can see the starting dividend yield is sitting right at 4.2%. That is a very high dividend yield. When you also consider the fact that this is a company that is a dividend king, they've been increasing the amount they pay in dividends for over 50 consecutive years. And then you look at this year to date, this is one of the few companies that has actually increased its share price year to date. We look at the one year return, we can see a pretty solid return at 23%. So in this video, we're going to be jumping into my stock valuation spreadsheet to see if this is a company we should be buying or selling. And on this spreadsheet, we have our four valuation models. We have Graham's valuation. We have a discounted cash flow model. We have a multiples valuation model and our dividend discount model. And all four of these valuations will roll into our output tab. So let's go ahead and jump over to our stock screener. If you'd like to be able to download the spreadsheet, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. But let's go ahead and come up here and we're just going to plug in the stock ticker for Ab VN. When I hit enter, you can see all this data is going to automatically load in. We come over here again, we can see pretty high starting dividend yield for a company that is a dividend king. Now, the payout ratio is fairly high, right at 76%. But you have to keep in mind that's a little more typical for companies that have been increasing the amount they pay in dividends for a very long time, not quite as much of a red flag. Now, the 20 and 50 day moving averages down slightly, as well as the 200 day moving averages. But again, we're looking at a 365 day chart and we can see a huge run up in the share price overall. One year return at over 23% and two-year return at over 50%. Now, this company is in the healthcare industry. So if you don't have much exposure to the healthcare industry in your portfolio, keep that in mind. This may be an option. Analysts currently have a target price of $159 per share. And the beta for this company is at 0.7. So you're going to see a little bit less volatility than the overall market as a whole. But let's go ahead and jump into our first valuation model, which is going to be Graham's valuation. This is a valuation model invented by Benjamin Graham, one of Warren Buffett's mentors, and this is the formula he laid out for us to calculate intrinsic value. So the first thing we're going to need is our earnings per share, which you can see listed right here. We're then going to multiply that by seven, which is the price to earnings of a company with no growth. And then we apply our growth rate projection. When you look at the analyst expectations for this company, it's a much more mature company, so we are going to see a lower growth rate. This is pretty low, um, so we're only applying a one growth rate. Then we multiply that by 4.4, which is the average yield of AAA corporate bonds. Once we've done all of that, we divide by Y, which is the current yield of AAA corporate bonds. And at the time of this video, it's sitting at 4.19, which gives this company an intrinsic value of $59 per share, which is actually much, much lower than the current price. But let's go ahead and jump over to our other valuation models. The next one we're going to look at is our discounted cash flow model. And in order to perform a discounted cash flow analysis, we need to project a growth rate for the future free cash flows for the company. So in order to do this, there's a few different things we want to do. And the first thing we want to do is plug in the historical free cash flow for this company so we can see the year over year free cash flow growth. We can see right here they have had pretty phenomenal free cash flow growth year over year. Average growth rate of about 28% since, uh, since 2016, which is pretty phenomenal. They had one year where you can see they did have a slight decline, but overall very good. Then you want to look at analyst expectations and industry expectations as well, as well as do your own research. But after looking at all this, I'm expecting a free cash flow rate moving forward of about 4%. Obviously, that is a lot lower than the average growth rate, but this is a more mature company. So that's actually not a terrible free cash flow growth rate. So I'm applying the 4% free cash flow or growth rate to the future free cash flows and to the terminal value, which is the sum of all the future free cash flows past the year 2030. I then found the present value of all those future free cash flows and added them together here. I added the company's cash and cash equivalents and subtracted out the total debt to get its equity value. Once I had the equity value, I divided by the number of shares outstanding and I came to a discounted cash flow price per share of $169.08. Now let's go ahead and move on to our multiples valuation. And the idea behind a multiples valuation is we should be able to value a company based on how the market is valuing companies that are similar in structure using a price to earnings multiple. So as you can see here, we're taking some fairly familiar companies such as Johnson & Johnson. We're taking their stock price, dividing by the earnings per share to find their price to earnings multiple. We then take the average price to earnings multiple of these companies that are similar to ABBV and we we multiply it by ABBV's earnings per share, which gives us an intrinsic value of $166 per share. So that is slightly higher than their current trading price. So one thing you do want to take note of is what does this mean is the average price to earnings for these companies is 27.4. If we jump back over to our stock screener, scroll down here, we can see ABBV's current price to earnings is 19.58. So when we look at it from a price to earnings ratio, it looks like the company might be slightly undervalued, which is what our valuation model told us with our intrinsic value. Now let's go ahead and look at our last valuation model, and that's the dividend discount model. Obviously a very important valuation if you're a value dividend investor, 
future. That's one of the reasons a lot of people invest in this company solely for the dividend. So we want to be looking for dividend growth and we also want to be looking at that starting dividend yield. So what I've done is I've plugged in the quarterly dividend payouts and this is going to allow us to see how much this company pays out yearly. Once we have that, we can see the year over year dividend growth rates for this company. And it's actually been really, really solid, especially for a company that's been increasing dividends for as long as they have. We can see 11.4% dividend growth, 10.2%. 10.1 and 8.46. That is very good dividend growth for a company that is this old. So that's an average growth rate of slightly over 10%. So moving forward, I am applying a growth rate of 6.25%. That is a pretty aggressive growth rate, but we've seen historically speaking, it looks like they can back that up. So after applying a discount rate of 9%, this gives us a dividend discount model price per share of $217 per share. Now, again, anytime you have a company that you're applying a pretty high growth rate to the dividend discount model, there's two things you're probably going to get you're going to want to do. You're going to jump back over to your stock screener and take a glance at this payout ratio. As we can see, 76%. That is higher than I typically like to see it. I like to see it underneath 35, but with a lot of the dividend kings, it is going to be a lot higher. That's pretty typical. But so then we want to jump over to our discounted cash flow model, and we want to make sure that the free cash flow will continue to grow so they can sustain the dividend payouts. So like we saw here, we are expecting this free cash flow to continue growing, so it should be sustainable. So let's go ahead and jump over to our output model. And here on the output model, we're going to see all four of our valuations. Graham's at 59 multiples at 166, discounted cash flow at 169, and dividend discount model at 217. And when we average all four of these together, we come to an intrinsic value of $153 per share. Now the current trading price for this company is $138. Now as a value dividend investor, we do always want to apply a margin of safety to our investments. So let's say we're a little bit more aggressive with our margin of safety when we apply 10%. We can see based off of that, our acceptable buy price is $137 per share. So the valuation is telling us this is not a stock we should be buying. Now it is right at that current price, so it's very close. It could easily get into that range within the next day or so. But let's say we're much more, uh, much more conservative with our margin of safety when we apply 30%. Based off of that, our acceptable buy price is $107 per share. Now, something you have to keep in mind with companies that are dividend kings like ABBV is they typically won't trade as much at a discount. As we've seen year to date, they haven't been quite as affected by the market. In fact, they're actually still up about 2%. So companies like this or Coca-Cola that have a more mature history, more consistent dividend payouts and dividend growth, they won't typically trade at a um, trade, they typically trade at a premium and want to be at discounted prices quite as often. So it's hard to get that 30% margin of safety. So if you're interested in this company, I would suggest more of a 10 to 20% margin of safety. But you have to keep in mind, most people are interested in this company solely for the dividend and the dividend growth alone. That over 4% starting dividend yield combined with a high dividend growth rate does make it an attractive investment. This is a company on my watch list personally. I don't own any shares, but I will continue to watch them closely. So if you'd like to be able to download the spreadsheet, you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.